chimps are very promiscuous and the males have very large testicles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, oh, they do, yeah. And they engage in a lot of what's called sperm competition. So like one female with, will mate with many males and then the, instead of the male sort of duking it out to get access, the, the, um, the sperm sort of compete and there's, and there's all kinds of uh, ways of doing that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have gorillas where it's sort of, they literally battle it out or at least, you know, intimidate the crap out of each other, the males, uh, to get access to all the females. And that's sort of a winner take all, um, sort of approach. Yeah. And they have yeah. very, very small testicles. Um, yeah. but then humans are kind of in the middle. So like in terms of, you know, testicle size to, to body weight. Um, yep. so, so what does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? It's, that's such a good point. And the, the gorilla and chimp example is such a good one for looking at. Yeah. What does it mean to have those big muscles versus the big testicles and the big penis? Because the gorilla has very small penis yeah. and testicles, as you said. Um, I think that humans de definitely have an evolutionary history of being more promiscuous. Yeah. So we, we have kind of those middle-sized <laughs> testicles, <laughs> and yet penis size is quite big in humans, yeah. comparatively speaking. Yeah. Um, and so I think that we've selected for more of a monogamous framework just in terms of our, evolution, our, our brief evolutionary history. Um, because we have smaller testicles, and yet they're still pretty big. <laughs> they're they're certainly big enough. Um, it, so that one is, I think, the jury is generally out on whether that's actually, um, you know, the evolution of the penis in humans. I mean, there's a lot of research to suggest that there's so many mechanisms at work there, in terms of female preference, um, and in terms of biological success um so there's yeah. the shape the shape of the phallus is another thing that sort of changes the success of specific sperms that are coming out of that shape if you will okay um, there's you know the the head of the penis is meant to there's some hypotheses to suggest, to suggest that that is like a scooping mechanism to like scoop out I've, yeah, sperms that, that have been there before um and so it it seems to me like the the amount of sperm competition is is vast within an individual, but then you even take that to another level of scale when you have that individual competing with the sperms of other individuals. Human sperm competition, I think, is alive and well. Yeah. I I feel like even though we have mono set up a monogamous framework for ourselves over over the past you know several hundred years. I don't know. I don't know how monogamous we are as a species, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it would be really interesting to um, to know about genetic data and like yeah. whose whose children are really whose. I think that would be quite a funny a funny thing to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there is some data to su that that says that basically we have twice as many female ancestors as we do male ancestors. Oh, interesting. Um. So I don't know what that means. I think there's different ways you can interpret that, um, because we also know that males tend to tend, tend to be bigger uh, risk takers and win a lot of Darwin awards. So, <laughs> and and also <laughs> and also are you know have higher rates of you know mental illness and Down syndrome and things like that. So mm -hmm. you know and and have a wider sort of IQ spread and. So there, there may be a lot of males that just aren't being, that aren't successful in the mating yeah. game. Um, yeah. Not having anything to do necessarily with female preference. I mean, it obviously female preference preference plays a role there, but. That's interesting. That's interesting. And it, it's interesting to sort of consider that even if your social game has, um, has won it for you, your biological game might not be won. Because even if, you know, for example, a female selects a certain male, that's not guaranteed that, that he will be the, you know, provider of the successful sperm. And in fact, you know, I think generally in the Western world, we have issues with that. You know, there's a lot of times where couples are having trouble getting pregnant. And I wonder how much of that is because we've taken away a lot of the biology behind, you know, what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Uh-huh. 
Um, so yeah, just kind of thinking about it from from that perspective <laughs> of the different, you know, sperm competition at many many <laughs> levels of scale. <laughs> yes, it's always interesting. Um, have you by any chance read uh, Christopher Ryan's book Sex at Dawn? Sex at Dawn. Yes, yes. this yeah. this comes yeah. up a lot, and it's been kind of pilloried by. Uh, a lot of people in the sort of evolutionary biology world, but um, it's been what? Uh, like it's been sort of debunked, if you will, or, ah, or criticized. Okay. Um, that because basically the thesis of the book is that uh, non-monogamy is, is is sort of the default, and that mm -hmm. you know. I don't disagree with that, to be honest yeah. with you. I, I mean, if you look at like non-monogamy is the way it is in all chimps. I mean, in all apes, in all primates, and and arguably in humans too. Other, you know, other than our frameworks, yeah. it's, that's a tricky one. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know a lot about the specific human history and the different cultures of the human world. I just kind of know about animals, <laughs> <laughs> and none of them are monogamous, Eric. Not even one. Not even one. <laughs> too complicated uh, we are just too complicated but it's you know what i you know why i love saying that though it's because at the end of the day sex really does dictate everything about our lives it really does you yeah. know we, we opened our conversation thinking about that theme and it's just like the the framework of your relationship you know whether you're in a monogamous partnership whether you're raising children together in your family and stuff that's actually an embodiment of your sex life Right. Um, and that, I think that's why I find it so funny that people don't generally want to talk about sex, but really when we're talking about any <laughs> aspect of your life, you're actually talking about sex.